is 8 News Now at 6. Dozens of armed federal officers are preparing for a showdown with a Nevada cattle rancher regarded by some as an outlaw, a hero by others. Rangers and agents from several federal agencies have surrounded a 600,000 acre section of public land and are preparing to move against rancher Cliven Bundy, whose cattle have been grazing illegally, they say, for the past 20 years. George Knapp of the I-Team visited the Bundy Ranch this week and has that story. So this is the freedom that we have in America right here. This is our ex We're going to be have our freedom inside of that uh, fence there. Bunkerville rancher <laughs> Cliven Bundy thinks the federal government has gone too far in preparing to round up his cattle. Example, this is one of two designated spots where the public will be allowed to protest the roundup. A sign inside the fence shows how some people feel about a First Amendment zone. And during our tour with Bundy, a passerby stopped to offer encouragement. I'm one of your neighbors. I get to look at that every day in my life. <laughs> Hang in there. Okay, friend. thank you. Miles away, just off the interstate, another fenced area is where media are allowed. Armed agents in trucks form a wall to prevent anyone from approaching what resembles a military staging area, the heart of the Bundy Roundup operation. More rangers sit at every road leading into the 600,000 acre Gold Butte area to prevent the general public from coming in. With all of these rangers and all this force that's out here, they're only after one man right now. Who do you think they're after? They're after Clive and Bundy. They, whether they want to incarcerate me or whether they want me to shoot me in the back, it don't, they're after me. But that's not all that's at stake here. Your liberty and, and uh, uh, freedoms are at stake. And Bundy's had a long time to sharpen his message. The fight has been building since 1993 when BLM changed grazing rules for Gold Butte to protect the endangered desert tortoise. Bundy refused to go along and stopped paying his fees altogether. Since then, the BLM and federal courts have ordered him to stop letting his cattle roam through Gold Butte. And he's ignored the orders because he doesn't recognize federal authority over the land. My forefathers have been up and down the Virgin Valley here ever since uh, 1877. All of these rights that I claim have been created through preemptive rights and beneficial use of the forage in the water. I have been here longer. My rights are all older than BLM even existed. The Bundy family was already ranching here long before the Department of Interior was born and long before tortoises were protected. But federal courts say he doesn't have a legal leg to stand on. BLM has long sidestepped the fight, in part because of concerns what might happen if it tried to round up his 500 or so cattle that even now are grazing on forbidden public lands. Bundy says he's always been willing to pay fees, but not if it helps to cut his own throat. I don't have no problem with that. I've tried to pay it to Nevada State, Clark County, and uh, they've got some of my money in their coffers right now from me. But I'm not going to pay my money to the wrong uh, landlord. And I'm not going to pay my money to, to BLM to manage me out of business. Is uh, the federal government has seized uh, Nevada uh, sovereignty, Nevada statehood. They've seized Nevada laws and they've seized our uh, public land. But we have no access to our public land. Critics say Bundy's being bit, arrogant see. and that his cattle have caused irreparable harm to Gold Butte's fragile environment. Environmentalists forced BLM's hand by threatening to sue in federal court. The Bureau will pay nearly a million dollars to a private contractor to round up Bundy's cows. But with dozens of government agents positioned all around the area for what might take weeks or months, the true cost could be much higher. Bundy's cow hands have time to kill these days because they're prohibited from heading out to work their cattle. And soon enough, there could be no cattle left. The BLM plans to sell off Bundy's herd. Bundy stopped short of saying how far he's willing to take it. Well, I've fought this thing legally. I've fought it politically. I've fought it through the media. And, uh, and I will fight it on the ground if I have to. George Knapp, 8 News Now. The I-Team has been asking to speak with Cliven Bundy for more than two years. He told us that while he agreed to speak to other media, he intended to save us until the end, and that could come soon. The BLM won't say exactly when the roundup will begin, but could happen as soon as this weekend. 
I thought, you know, after 20 years, they finally got guts enough to do it. Cliven Bundy says he was born and raised on this land. I'm the only one left. The 67-year-old says other cattle ranchers were forced off the land once the BLM came around, but he is refusing to leave. So I stand as the last man standing. But the BLM says that's not fair to cattle ranchers following the rules. And finally, on Saturday, 75 of Bundy's cattle were seized. They've been setting up for a couple of weeks, spending taxpayers' money, and uh, and so, yeah, I knew it was going to happen someday. On this 600,000-acre section of public land, security is tight. This command post is guarded. Bundy says his fight isn't just about land or cattle. He believes the federal government is overstepping its boundaries. It finally come down to sh prove and show Clive and Bundy and the rest of the world that the United States government has unlimited power in, in the state of Nevada. This is a complex and costly operation with one man at the center of it all. With only 75 taken of the 500 cattle Bundy says he has, you okay? Huh? You okay? This is just the beginning. And our battle's going to go on for months, so if, if they want a long, good, hard battle, we're ready. The son of an embattled Bunkerville rancher has been released from jail, even as federal agents continue to oversee a roundup of the rancher's cattle. The I-Team's Glenn Meek spoke to David Bundy this afternoon, not long after he was released from custody. Yeah, that's right. It's the first arrest in what's being called sort of a modern-day range hmm. war. Uh, this weekend, wranglers hired by the federal government started removing cattle owned by rancher Cliven Bundy from a 1,200 square mile stretch of land near the Virgin Ridger River, I should say, gorge. This picture shows where Bundy's son David had parked his car to take pictures of the cattle eviction. It's along State Route 170 near Bunkerville. David Bundy says he was only exercising his First Amendment rights when federal officers told him to leave the area, and when he didn't, they grabbed him. Two officers surround me, third one in front of me, they jumped me and uh, took me to the ground. So he scraped up my face. Um, <laughs> they steal my cattle, but that's bad enough. They, they make my son a political uh, a prisoner. Now, the feds started removing Bundy's cattle from the Gold Butte area this past weekend. The Bureau of Land Management says Bundy has been grazing his livestock there illegally for years. Bundy says it's a state's rights issue, and his family has the right to graze cattle there because they've been working that land for more than 100 years. And so a standoff of sorts continues with the feds continuing to round up the cattle and the Bundys continuing their war of words. At last word, 134 cattle had been corralled. And it's estimated there's about 900 head of cattle in that area, so this roundup could take yeah. several weeks. That's the modern-day range war is taking place right now in Bunkerville. People in that small community are trying to stop federal rangers from taking cattle off federal land. And today, at least two people say they were hurt in the process. 8 News Now has been covering this controversy for years. And today, our cameras were rolling as protesters got within feet of federal rangers armed with tasers. And Lauren Rosella is live near the protest with the latest on that showdown. Lauren. Dave Paula, many of the people at the center of this controversy are standing right over there. They are the Bundy family, and they say they're willing to be tased, even beaten to defend what they say is theirs. The Bundy family is willing to fight until the end, getting in front of cars, even getting tased. This skirmish quickly turned into an angry mob, and protesters were hurt. Ammon Bundy says he was tased twice. And then they tased me again. Mm. Okay. And they pulled it out again, probably because I didn't drop on the ground. I just, I, that was convulsing, but I did not drop on the ground. He still has the marks on his neck and chest. One of the Bundy the sisters says she was also injured after a ranger hit her with his car. I, I just felt a, a hard push and I went to the ground. The Bundys say the BLM is killing their cattle in the process of rounding them up. Which is just one of the consequences of allowing the federal government to come out here and to access this land. That's something the feds deny, but the community here is still worried, joining the family along the side of the road, telling the BLM to get out. It's whenever you spend $3 million to supposedly collect what they would say a million dollars in back fees, there's something basically wrong there. 
Protester Jim Lordy came to the group packing a weapon, a representative of Operation Mutual Aid. We're here to make sure the citizens' rights aren't violated. While the Bundys don't feel guns are necessary, they are planning to be out here every day. They want the federal government out and are willing to do what it takes. And just in the last 15 minutes, police decided to cancel an interview with us on what happened over with the protesters today, instead deciding to issue a statement. And we will have that for you tonight at 11. Now, as for all of the people with the road closures and people having trouble getting to their homes, most of the roads to the Valley of Fire, Gold Butte, and the Logandale Trail are now closed, according to the town board. We'll have more on that coming up in later editions of 8 News Now. For now, reporting live, Lauren Rosella, 8 News Now. Thanks, Lauren. There's now YouTube video. Video showing that tasing incident Lauren just mentioned. It was posted this afternoon to the Facebook group supporting the Bundy family. In it, you can see Amon Bundy, Cliven Bundy's son, approach officers on scene. It appears that he kicks a canine who comes near him, and then he's being tased. But that doesn't stop him. He approaches officers again and is tased a second time. This seems to upset other protesters who then get into arguments with the Rangers. Bundy's battle with the BLM has a long history. According to Cliven Bundy, his family has been using this wide area of land since 1877. Of course, that's before the BLM was even formed. Bundy didn't stop paying his grazing fees until 1993, just a couple of years after the desert tortoise was put on the endangered species list. The following year is when he lost his grazing rights on the land, and years of court battles followed until last year when the court told Bundy to move his cattle or else the government would step in and find Five days ago, they did just that. Federal agents started rounding up the animals, closing down 1,200 square miles to do it. Cliven Bundy's fight against the feds has gone on for more than two decades, but in the last two days, his cause has ignited a firestorm of debate, thanks in part to social media. 8 News Now reporter Aaron Drawhorn shows us how the public is weighing in from all over the country. Aaron? Yes, Dave, you can always tell how big an issue is by what's trending on social media. Take a look at this on Facebook this morning. This was the top story. Nevada rancher intense standoff with federal government over cattle. At one point, it was even more popular than the second story there about Stephen Colbert taking David Letterman's place. This so-called range war is also being fought online. And I'm not going to pay my money to, to BLM to manage... The Channel 8 I team last week told you Cliven Bundy's story. Bunkerville rancher Cliven Bundy thinks the federal government has gone too far. And the cattle battle began. Cliven Bundy became a national figure overnight. My statement to the American people, I'll do whatever it takes to gain our liberties and freedom back. All right, Cliven, we're going to follow the story very closely. Citizens also followed his story very closely, some responding with a call to action, posting videos about a revolution in Nevada. It's a green light. I repeat, it is a go. We will be showing up in Nevada to support Cliven Bundy. On Twitter, Bundy supporters use hashtags such as Stop Bundy Siege and Range War while his opponents label this a deranged war by a welfare rancher. But online, Bundy has more people sounding off on his behalf. The feds in full SWAT and tactical gear uh, getting ready to Ruby Ridge or, or, or wake up. As dramatic videos of the BLM using tasers go viral, so do Clive and Bundy's own words each time he speaks, as he did last night at the Moapa Valley Town Advisory Board. It's about freedom and liberty and our constitution and our state sovereignty and our Nevada laws. Here in the hashtag Wild West. Two protesters are recovering tonight after a scuffle with federal rangers out at the Bundy cattle protest. The two men were tres trespassing in a federal holding pen for Cliven Bund Bundy's cattle, recently rounded up by the BLM. And that's when the men say they were surrounded by rangers, threatened with tasers, and detained for hours. Lauren Rosella was there as the latest incident in the Bundy versus BLM case. This small group gathered tonight just outside Mesquite to show support for the two men detained by federal rangers. They stepped over a federal line and one was hurt, but they say it was worth it. I decided, you know what, 
enough is enough. Tyler Schilling and his brother Spencer found out firsthand what can happen going head to head with federal rangers. I went down and confronted the officers and then I was also arrested. Tyler wasn't hurt, but Spencer was. So they took me to the ground. He says these marks on his face are a result of the encounter. Were you physical with them at all before this happened? No, I was not. I showed no signs of, of aggression. The brothers were in Overton to support local rancher Cliven Bundy. His family is at the center of the controversy. The Bundys have allowed their cattle to graze these public lands illegally for the past 20 years. Saturday, the BLM started rounding them up, prompting people to protest. Who's got the guns? Comply, comply. And this isn't the first skirmish. Rangers tased Ammon Bundy twice after they say he kicked a canine. And this video shows Margaret Bundy Houston getting thrown to the ground. Tonight, she's still recovering. Covering. I'm just sore. You know, my body's sore. I can tell that I, I've been jolted. These brothers were detained by the BLM for two hours and released with citations. I do believe it was. If the statement, if, if the cause gets out, it was worth it. Lauren Rosella, 8 News Now. We have reached out to the BLM for their take on what happened tonight. They say they're still gathering information and don't have any additional details. Now, today, Governor Sandoval issued a statement about the protests saying, quote, I am asking all individuals near the situation to act with restraint. Escalation of current events could have negative, long-lasting consequences that can be avoided, unquote. People are coming in from out of state now to hold off the uh, federal rangers, and many are armed. We have team coverage. Aaron Drawhorn shows us how this local rancher's stand has sparked a national debate. But we begin with Lauren Rosella, live outside Bunkerville, where the crowds are even bigger today. Lauren? That's right, Dave and Paula. Well, the Bundy family has allowed their cattle to graze these land illegally for the past 20 years. But Saturday, the BLM started rounding them up, prompting protesters to form here. Tensions reached a boiling point yesterday after Rangers tased a man twice. Another woman told us a BLM Ranger knocked her to the ground. Now, armed militiamen are making their way in to defend, but not everyone is happy about it. Who's got the guns? Comply, comply, comply. Comply. Comply with the order. Yes, sir. This encounter with the Federal Ranger Wednesday left bloody marks over rancher Ammon Bundy's neck and chest. The aftermath was a mob. Where's my baby calf? Now Bundy is telling his supporters Federal Rangers won't hesitate to go on the attack if necessary. These are heavily armed individuals with fully automatic weapons. For days, the land around the Bundy ranches seemed somewhat like a police state to people in this community. Throwing women to the ground, tasing them, sicking canine dogs on them. That's caught the attention of private militia across the country who feel First Amendment rights are being violated. That's what we do. We provide armed response. Jim Lordy came from Montana to join the protesters, and he says he's not afraid to shoot if necessary. Why the gun? Well, they have guns. We need guns to protect ourselves from a tyrannical government. And he says other militia members are joining him. There's many more coming. There you go, honey. But for this small community, violence isn't a part of the conversation. These people that are coming in could totally disrupt everything. Restaurant even, owner Judy Met says adding guns and militiamen could lead to lives lost. That absolutely frightens me. Somebody does something or says something and these guys pull a gun, that's going to be all, that's, that's going to be it. For now, things remain peaceful, but these protesters stand ready, expecting things could turn ugly at any moment. But tonight's success for some of these protesters, the BLM took down their controversial First Amendment areas at the urging of Governor Brian Sandoval. As for the fight between the ranchers and the rangers, the BLM says they felt threatened after a protester kicked a canine unit. Local rancher Cliven Bundy has his cattle back again tonight, but law enforcement officers say things nearly turned into a riot. Metro says protesters could have been shot or even trampled as they tried to storm a federal holding pen gate. We have team coverage this evening. Scott Daniels has an exclusive interview with Cliven Bundy. But first, we begin with Lauren Rosella live, where crowds of protesters shut down I-15 near Mesquite. Sheree, Cliven Bundy has allowed his cattle to graze these public lands illegally for the past 20 years. Well, one week ago, the BLM started rounding them up. 
A deal was tentatively reached this morning, pulling the BLM out of this area, but protesters wanted Clive and Bundy seize cattle returned to him and tried swarming a federal holding pen to take them back. Give me Eamon Bundy. Hurry, give me Eamon Bundy. Protesters flooded this federal holding pen area, aiming to release Clive and Bundy's cattle. Push them back up off the gate for right now. Let me work with you and you. I'll allow you two to come in with me. That's no, it. It's the people or not, and you guys need to leave. Uh, push these people back so they can do it safely. Federal officers tried to bring the Bundys over the line to negotiate. But after Dave Bundy was already arrested once, he was fearful it would happen again. I'll give you my honest word right here. I'm going to walk you in so you can negotiate with your father up top. Walking past armed BLM Rangers, the Bundy started talks about releasing the cattle and calming the crowds. But what I need you to do is to keep this crowd calm I will do above that. and below. The incident commanders agreed to release Bundy's cattle, but say ultimately it's not their call. So on behalf of the United States federal government, I cannot authorize you to release Understood. those cattle. Metro police were on hand to keep the peace between protesters and the BLM, but Metro leaders say they wish it had never come to this. We had a lot of fears of individuals being shot, individuals being trampled, uh, individuals being run over on the highway. So it, would, it took a lot of resources, a lot of resources sources for the taxpayers associated with this. Bundy's cattle are back to roaming public lands, but it's still unclear what consequences the Bundy's could face for opening that gate. The BLM says they released the cattle to avoid violence from protesters out here and the federal government could still come after Bundy. Sheriff Doug Gillespie, though, was instrumental in brokering this original deal between the BLM and the Bundy family. He's been working on this behind the scenes for years. And the man behind all of the fighting was nowhere near today's demonstrations. While chaos ensued in the desert near Mesquite, 8 News Now Scott Daniels found Clive and Bundy soaking up victory at the Virgin River near his ranch. Scott continues our team coverage tonight with this exclusive interview. The warm waters of the Virgin River was where the celebrations started. Clive and Bundy went from unknown cattle rancher to anti-big government hero this week for winning his cattle back from the Bureau of Land Management. He agreed to talk to us for an exclusive interview on one condition. If you want to interview me, come in the water. We will. We will. There we go. While we took our shoes off for the interview, word had not yet reached the hundreds of protesters who were blocking traffic to Interstate 15. The battle was over. There's protesters out there blocking the highway right now. Um, are they aware that the deal has been made? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they know. The deals are just coming through to me uh, uh, just within the last few minutes. The deal, there's no deal here. Bundy said talks with Sheriff Gillespie fell short and that it was Bundy's team of supporters who rounded up the cattle to take back to his property. The state disagreed, saying they negotiated a deal to give back the herd. I'm not the hero. Those, those citizens that went up there and did the work and suffered whatever suffering they've been through, they're the heroes of America, not Clive and Bundy. Bundy repeated that his fight with the feds was about more than cows. His supporters, here from all over the country, echoed his rally cry. This is Westerners standing up. The sheriff did not get his job done, and we're not going to leave until that job's done. In the meantime, Bundy and his family are actually waiting for the cows to come home to the river next to his ranch. Thanks for joining us. Tensions are high as self-described militia take up arms to support the Bundy family in Bunkerville. And they say they're sticking around, believing that armed federal agents will return. The I team's Nathan Baca takes us inside the political philosophy held so dear by the protesters. Well, the protesters at Clive and Bundy's ranch believe this is about a lot more than just cattle. Mm -hmm. Now, they showed that on Saturday when Bundy delivered an ultimatum to Clark County Sheriff Doug Gillespie to arrest federal officers. His demands and ultimatums appear to grow by the day, backed up by some high-powered rifles. On a bridge in Bunkerville, holding high-powered scoped rifles, these men took cover, prepared to shoot, prepared to die. Here to protect our freedom. 
to happen sometime, might as well happen now, right? This Saturday, he took position with other gunmen, taking the high ground as federal agents waited in the wash below. Between them, men, women, and their children marched toward a fence. They're yeah, getting ready they're, to they're, launch they're, stuff they're, they're at us. Get ready. On the other side of the fence, Bureau of Land Management agents, also armed, also took cover. They guarded a corral with Clive and Bundy's cattle. Clark County Sheriff Doug Gillespie said he wanted to discuss a compromise with Bundy in private. Instead, Bundy compelled the sheriff to address him in public. You and I have had the ability to sit down and talk before on a number of occasions. We have, may not always agreed, uh, but we have been respectful. After Sheriff Gillespie announced that BLM would leave Bunkerville, sheriff, Clive and Bundy looked at the sheriff and delivered his new dis ultimatum. Disarm the Park Service. At Lake Mead and Red, Red Rock Park and all other parks that the federal government claims they have jurisdiction over. Yeah. We want those arms delivered right here under these flags in one hour. Bundy told a crowd on Monday that after an early morning prayer, he turned his demand into a mandate for county sheriffs nationwide to arrest and disarm federal officers. We got to get America back up on its feet. Clive and son Mel perhaps best describes the evolving political philosophy of the protesters. So this cattle issue is just one small corner of the problem that we're having as citizens with the federal government. Okay, get out of our states. The protesters, radio talk hosts, random political leaders, and Nevada Assemblywoman Michelle Fiore all stand in support of Bundy's call for county sheriffs nationwide to arrest federal officers. It was up to BLM Special Agent Dan Love to negotiate the government retreat Saturday. No gun pointing. No gun. This is our land. Open the gate. Continue to push these people back so they can do it safely. Push them back so they can do it safely. They're going to. They're going to. They're going to. They can't leave if they're engaged. So push them back. Let's give them push them back. Here we go. Okay, that's all I need. Judging by the protesters' signs, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid finds himself in the middle of this controversy. We asked Senator Reid his take on Bundy ignoring three federal court orders. Even the Nevada Cattlemen's Association, one of the most conservative um, organizations in the country. They don't support what's going on up there. They want people to follow the law just like we all do. On the streets of Las Vegas, when gunmen point weapons at sworn peace officers, they are often shot and killed. But in Bunkerville, these men held the bridge. The difference between these gunmen and gunmen in our urban streets comes down to a political cause. At some point you have to draw a line in the sand as you know. And this is, I guess this is it, you know. Regretfully, we didn't get this man's name. Our photographer was fearful of possible crossfire should shooting happen and kept moving. But this gunman and the others pledged to be back because these anti-federalist protesters got their first victory. Not by the ballot, not by rallies, but on a bridge with guns aimed at police. Clive and Bundy's family worked their ranch land since 1877. The family claims ancestral and sovereign rights. Just yesterday, we received a map from the Moapa Band of Paiute Indians. It shows how the land that Bundy ranches uh, that was promised them by federal treaty. That is, until federal troops forced the tribe out and families, including the Bundy family, settled in. Tonight, local rancher Cliven Bundy and his family are surrounded by armed supporters, some even blocking a county road to their property. They're expecting the federal government to make arrests after they interfered with a court-ordered cattle roundup. We have team coverage. First, Lauren Rosella shows us what could be next for the Bundys. Certified letters are coming to the Bundy Ranch courtesy of the BLM. They're of no concern to Ryan Bundy, who doesn't recognize the federal government's authority. We ignore them to the large degree simply because they don't exist. Rancher Cliven Bundy says his attorneys may open the letters in time. For today, I'm not worried about it at all. But the Bundys are concerned about what they call the bigger picture. Where did those guns go? Where did those guns go? Not the guns of armed Bundy supporters, ones that tried to stop us from filming Thursday on a public road. There's a privacy act. You do not have permission to film me. We're watching you up here trying to chase people down. You need to turn that off. Instead, Bundy means the guns held by the Bureau of Land Management.
Saturday, Bundy told Sheriff Doug Gillespie he must disarm the Park Service and bring the guns back in a truck to supporters in 60 minutes. I mean, do you feel like it was a reasonable request in one hour to disarm the Park Service and to have them bring their guns back? Well, I was a little surprised with that request, too. But that was, the that was your request. No, that was a request our people give. His armed supporters responded by flooding a federal cattle pen, and the BLM decided to release Bundy's cattle. He even holds the media responsible for not solving this matter. You let the United States government get away with a very, very serious crimes. and The BLM didn't respond to requests for information on the letters Bundy received, but maintained they've stopped the roundup for now. However, the Bundys have no formal deal with the BLM over their cattle grazing public lands. And while there's been no talk of arrests in this dispute, it's unclear how the BLM could choose to respond. Armed civilians still guarding the Bundy Ranch are camping out, staying at their posts for hours, and living away from their families, all because they say the rancher needs protection. Vanessa Murphy continues our team coverage to tell us who these people are. Vanessa. Paula, you can see these guys right over here. They're Bundy supporters. Now, we've met many different supporters who have driven from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, so many different states to show they believe in Bundy's cause. And especially for those protecting him, they are passionate. They're putting their lives on hold. Some of them say they are willing to die for the cause. PX, hold off on that. Uh, he may be at the location. Patrick Downs is guarding the Bundy Ranch. It's a brotherhood to the point to where I would give my life for another. Downs says he's 20 years old from California and drove here with fellow members of a militia, which he joined last August after he found the group on Google. Enough is enough. The government's trying to take so many things away from us. He doesn't want to name his militia because of concerns about the federal government. He tells us he's unemployed and looking for a job. He scrounges to get by and he doesn't want kids because he fears he'd leave a child fatherless for causes like this one. I will never fire upon a federal agent first. Our rules of engagement are strictly do not fire until fired upon. Downs has an AR-15 nearby. Just down the road, Kenneth Mitchell won't say if he's armed. I'll be here till the end. What does the end mean? Hopefully a peaceful re resolution to all this that America wakes up and realizes an oppressive government that we have, a tyrannical government that we have that needs to be stopped and the time is now to stop. He says he's moving from Montana to Las Vegas and stopped here to show his support. He just joined the Oath Keepers Saturday, which a group leader says is not militia. To make sure that everybody is aware of the Constitution and what our constitutional rights are and to protect the oath of preserving the Constitution. The Bureau of Land Management allowed Bundy to release his cattle Saturday after they felt threatened by those self-styled militiamen. Lauren Rosell is live in Bunkerville with what is next. Lauren. Dave Paul, Clive and Bundy now has a whole contingent of armed guards surrounding him 24 hours a day. He says he's fearful that the government could come in because the BLM and his family never reached a formal deal. The BLM only allowed the family to take out the cattle because officers were afraid of violence. As of now, no one has cleared him to take his cattle back for good. Local rancher Clive and Bundy is much in demand these days. Here he is flanked by several armed guards on his way to do a live national interview. They're just there trying to make sure that something crazy doesn't happen to him. His security detail and family feel he's someone to be protected because of what the federal government could do. There was snipers on the hills and armed guards and, and you know military forces with cameras all over. Taking the stage to address supporters, Bundy was quickly obscured behind his guards. The detail tells us they're now patrolling this area 24 hours a day looking for federal snipers. But you never know. I mean, you never know. Bundy has allowed his cattle to graze public land illegally for the past 20 years, and more than a week ago, the feds started rounding them up. Give me Eamon Bundy. Hurry, give me Eamon Bundy. Saturday, the BLM agreed to pull out of the area, but hundreds of protesters flooded a federal BLM station aiming to release hundreds of Bundy's cattle. Many of them were armed. Now I want to talk about what happened. Monday, Bundy says he never told his supporters to flood that cattle pen using weapons. Members of Bundy's security details say more militia groups are on their way and will be there for weeks to come. 
as of now, no law enforcement have talked about arresting anyone in this dispute. And as of now, there is still no clear resolution over Bundy grazing his cattle on public land without paying grazing fees. Good evening tonight. Federal authorities remain silent about their next plans to confront Clive and Bundy at his Bunkerville ranch. More than a week ago, agents stopped rounding up Bundy's cattle after armed protesters showed up. Both sides are in some ways fighting over history, with federal courts denying Bundy's claims of ancestral rights on the Virgin River Valley. The I team's Nathan Baca examines how bitter historical disputes are being fought in the very present day. Well, at the Bunkerville camp right next to Clive and Bundy's ranch, there are constant reminders of history. Now you have Revolutionary War flags, ancient Greek mottos, Native American symbols, all mixing together to create a growing identity and narrative for protesters. But the I-Team dug into century-old records to examine Bundy's claims to ancestral rights on this disputed land. This land is unusually fertile and green for Southern Nevada. Clive and Bundy grows melons here. They're said to be the best in the state and his cattle, until recently, roamed freely on land managed by the Federal Bureau of Land Management. Before the roundup that sparked protests, confrontations, and gunmen taking a bridge, Clive and Bundy explain his ancestral rights to the I-Team's George Knapp. My forefathers have been up and down the Virgin Valley here ever since uh, 1877. Uh, they're, they're all these rights that I claim have been created through preemptive rights and beneficial use of the forage in the water and the access and range improvements. Clark County property records show Clive and Bundy's parents bought the 160 acre ranch in 1948 from Raul and Ruth Levitt. Bundy's family moved from Bundyville, Arizona. Water rights were transferred too, but only to the ranch, not the federally managed land surrounding it. Court records show Bundy family cattle didn't start grazing on that land until 1954. The Bureau of Land Management was created in 1946, the same year yeah, Cliven was born. Longer. My rights are all older than BLM even existed. and uh, But my rights were created through beneficial use. And so their bene beneficial use means we use the forage and the water from the, time the very first pioneers come here. Early census records show Cliven's maternal grandmother, Christina Jensen, was born in Nevada in 1901. One genealogical researcher says records indicate Jensen helped settle Bunkerville some years later. One word spreading through Bundy's supporters and his armed guards, what the federal government is doing to Bundy is exactly what they did to Native Americans. They are literally um, uh, treating uh, uh, Western, uh, uh, Western United States citizens, ranchers, uh, rural folks like this, are the modern day Indians. We're being driven off of our lands. We're being asked to or forced into uh, reservations known as cities. The local Paiute Indians were forced into reservations by federal troops in 1875. Two years prior, the tribe was promised the same land. Clive and Bundy now grows his melons and until recently grazed his cattle. The yeah, team's research team has come up with an in-depth look at the genealogy and property records that form the basis of Clive and Bundy's claim of ancestral rights on the ranch land. You can see it for yourself. That's on 8newsnow.com. The keyword is Bundy. So according to your research, this date of 1867 or sometimes said is 1870? 1877 is the date that some of his relatives, okay. we're still trying to exactly figure out that direct link. Um, of, uh, families with the LDS church, many times they have very large families yes. and in that sense, sense it is very difficult in a sense to track down but 1947 1948 is yeah. when that uh, ranch actually got into the Bundy family hands interesting thank you Nathan yeah. Militia groups are still surrounding the Bundy Ranch days after the BLM ended its cattle roundup. But many among those groups think they've been infiltrated by undercover federal agents. One man who had been among the armed protesters says at least two federal agents came in undercover to gather information and are preparing to make arrests. Lauren Rosella is live in Bunkerville where tensions are high. Lauren. I was told by a militia man, you'd better tell the truth. Anonymous is watching. Well, that man didn't want to elaborate on that, but he is living over in this camp, heavily guarded, where they're prepared to live for weeks, even months. But now there's a lot of uncertainty circling the Bundy Ranch. These self-described militiamen say they took an oath to protect. When you pledge your life and your fortune, 
you're prepared to give it up. But an atmosphere of uncertainty now surrounds the Bundy Ranch. These guards can't be entirely sure. You don't know until you actually catch somebody. But they say it's entirely possible federal agents are now among them, posing as fellow militia. It's always something that we're always thinking about. Um, these men are here to protect Bunkerville rancher Cliven Bundy's family. Bundy has allowed his cattle to graze public lands illegally for 20 years, and the feds started rounding them up three weeks ago, but stopped after armed protesters interfered. Supporters took his cattle back from a federal holding pen, but still, militia continue to guard him and these hills 24 hours a day. For former Bundy guard Franklin Disky, this is very troubling. They are now still calling for militia. They are not in dug-in positions. They are sitting on top of ridges. They don't have night vision capability. Frank left the ranch in the middle of the night after at least two men tried joining the guard who he says made him uncomfortable. The people that are up there, they have a certain look about them. These aren't these are military. They're, they're, I, my belief is federal agents. Frank feels these alleged federal agents are there to gather intel on militia members and eventually conduct a raid. They're dirty. They're dirty. But despite this belief, these militias show no signs of leaving, and many say they're ready to die fighting. The Bureau of Land Management is declining any on camera interviews at this point, but there's been no talk of any arrests in connection with this dispute. They abort their, their young children, they put their young men in jail because they never, they never learned how to pick cotton. And I've often wondered, you know, are they better off as slaves picking cotton, having family life and doing things, or are they better off under government subsidy? That was Bunkerville rancher Cliven Bundy speaking to supporters this Saturday. Those comments drew nationwide criticism with politicians on both sides calling the words hateful. Cliven Bundy attempted to explain those comments in a news conference this afternoon. And we have live team coverage on today's events. Lauren Rosella spoke with a local lawmaker in Mesquite about the comments. But first, the I-team's Nathan Baca just returned from Bunkerville and shows us what Bundy said today. Paula Cliven Bundy took the stage near his Bunkerville ranch. At first, he demanded to know why reporters aren't asking Sheriff Gillespie why he hasn't taken all federal agents' guns in Clark County. Then he defended what he said Saturday by saying he's not racist, he's just asking questions. I'm a wondering, I'm a wondering, Cliven Bundy's a wondering about these people. Now I'm talking about the black community. I'm a wondering, are they better off with their uh, young uh, women aborting their children? Are they better off with their young men in prison? And are they better off with the older people on the sidewalks in front of their government issued homes uh, with a, a few children on them? Are they better off? Are they happier than they was when they was in the South in front of their homes with their chickens and their gardens? and their children around them, and their men having something to do? Are they better off? I'm a wondering. I'm not saying that I uh, thought they was, should be slaves, or, or I'm never even saying they was better off one way or the other. I'm a wondering if they're better off. Bundy acknowledged that very few ethnic minority members are coming to his rallies. He gave his explanation for that. We'll show that coming up on 8 News Now at 6. It's really hard to listen to. It's certainly for many people, this is very emotional. Yeah. Thanks, Nathan. Meantime, one lawmaker says Cliven Bundy is no hero. Representative Stephen Horsford just finished a meeting with several local legislators about what to do about our militia patrolling the area. Lauren Rosella continues our team coverage from Mesquite, where Horsford says Bundy's comments are unacceptable. Lauren? Thank you, Paul. Horsford says Bundy's comments belong in the dustbin of history. He also says they don't reflect the true struggles of black Americans today. And he also says Bundy is not a good representation of a Nevada rancher. To talk about African Americans on the front steps of their homes and to draw from that the conclusion that they have done nothing or they have nothing to do, that maybe they were better off under slavery, that they abort their young and that they send their young boys to prison is beyond the pale. 
Horsford also says he wants Clive and Bundy's armed militias out of this area. He says he's working with local leaders in Mesquite, Bunkerville, and Moapa to figure out a strategy where Clive and Bundy feel safe, but the armed guards are gone. He says their presence has hurt a thriving tourist destination, and they must work together for a solution. Also, as he was leaving that press conference today, Horsford says he has not yet spoken with Clive and Bundy and doesn't plan to at this point, but he does respect that the Bundy family has been in this area for more than 60 years. The saga at Bundy Ranch took another turn today. Clive and Bundy asked for forgiveness after making comments many found offensive. Cattle ranchers' remarks about African Americans possibly being better off during slavery caused backlash and many big name supporters distanced themselves. In a post to his own Facebook page today, Bundy compared himself to civil rights icon Rosa Parks, but he wanted to clear the air on the comments that turned the cattle battle into a racial one. Well, <clears throat> issue of racial issue uh, yesterday and it got sort of sort of bad they figured I was probably one of the worst racial uh, uh, people in on the whole whole earth and uh, <clears throat> but I never did believe that I believe that uh, the people that have been listening to me knew better we have live team coverage from Bunkerville today. Lauren Rosella is at the ranch where Bundy supporters are gearing up. They're invited anyway for a special barbecue. But first, Vanessa Murphy joins us with more on the one-on-one -on -one conversation she had with the rancher. Vanessa. Clive and Bundy is apologizing for those controversial statements he made about African Americans. He says he's speaking from the heart and he seems surprised about all this backlash. Now, in his most recent statement, Bundy said he's trying to keep Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream alive and that he's standing up against the federal government the same way Rosa Parks refused to sit in the back of the bus. This started after a video from a recent press conference surfaced showing Bundy making comments about African Americans, which many people people found offensive. On the video, he said he was wondering whether they were better off as slaves or the way he views them more recently on welfare and with men in prisons and women getting abortions. What apology do you want to get across? Well, I want them to wake up and see what I'm saying. I want them not to be prejudiced. I don't want them to be, I, I want them to realize they're, they're their self. Each of us is our, our, ourselves. It don't matter what color we are. But are you sorry for your words that no. have offended people? If I offend, I'm not sorry for my words, and I don't think I've offended people. So I'm not. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I really not sorry. You I have think, offended people. Well, I'm. I'm sorry about that. Many Nevada lawmakers have been speaking out condemning Bundy's comments, including some who had previously supported his fight against the Bureau of Land Management. But tonight, some of Bundy's supporters say they're standing by the rancher. Lauren Rosella was in Bunkerville earlier tonight at that barbecue near Bundy's ranch. Paul and Dave, following Bundy's comments, he expended a special invitation to the people in the Hispanic and African American communities. And tonight, Bundy supporters say the rancher's recent comments comments on race do not mean he's a racist. Near the Virgin River, a group gathers. These supporters say their fight is not over with the Bureau of Land Management. Well, this has just begun. You know, they're about to do the same thing in Texas on the Red River Valley. BLM's going in there. They're going to have another fight on their hands. Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy has allowed his cattle to graze public lands illegally for 20 years. When the BLM seized his cattle, armed supporters interfered and the feds allowed Bundy to release them. But just as the Bundy movement was gaining momentum, a roadblock. I'm a wandering, Clive and Bundy's a wandering about these people. Now I'm talking about the black community. I'm a wandering, are they better off with their... Uh, young uh, women aborting their children. Are they better off with their young men in prison? These comments had many calling Clive and Bundy a racist. They are statements infused with bigotry and racism, and they are not to be tolerated. But his supporters say Bundy's comments on race mean nothing. How much are these? 
Alex Benecki was still lining up at Friday's barbecue to buy some Bundy gear. But I know for a fact that that man's not a racist and his words were taken out of context. All the proceeds from the clothes and pins go to help with the Bundy's expenses. Regardless of, you know, whether somebody was racist or not, I, I believe in the right to be able to feel that way. If you want to be a racist in this country, you have a right to be a racist. It's when you step over the line and hurt somebody because of your beliefs, now you don't have those rights. After asking forgiveness, Cliven Bundy maintains he is not a racist. Possibly to make good on those words, Ryan Bundy ran up to shake the hand of the only African American to turn up to their barbecue. Hotels in Mesquite say they've already lost more than $100,000 in business because of armed militia groups patrolling nearby Bunkerville. And tonight we're learning Mesquite police are investigating death threats to hotel staffers following a bomb threat earlier this month. The threats were reportedly called in by supporters of Cliven Bundy, the Bunkerville rancher battling over his cattle with the Bureau of Land Management. And Lauren Mazzell is live in Bunkerville with more. Lauren? Representative Stephen Horsford says the people in this community are living in constant fear of an armed militia presence. We went into Mesquite today and while some of the top hotel chains there didn't want to go on camera, they say that this issue has cost them and this community plenty. As armed militia groups poured into Bunkerville to support rancher Clive and Bundy, so did threats. One Mesquite City leader said the entire Holiday Inn Express was evacuated for hours following a bomb threat related to the Bundy saga more than two weeks ago. 8 News Now obtained this police report, which also shows the hotel received at least nine threatening phone calls in April after they allowed BLM Rangers to stay in the hotel. Workers were told to kick out the BLM or they would not be standing in the morning. One Mesquite hotel worker who didn't want to go on camera said he was told by an anonymous militia member that he would be, quote, dragged out in the parking lot and shot. We are not a playground for armed militias. Now lawmakers say these out-of-state armed Bundy supporters need to go. This unfortunate incident and the outside groups who have come for their own agenda are putting a black eye on this community. In this letter to Sheriff Doug Gillespie, Horsford says militias are setting up checkpoints that are near schools and churches and people fear for their safety. Happy birthday to Meantime, Clive and Bundy, who just turned 68, says it's not the militias causing fear, but instead the police who are investigating them. I think those people have put a little fear into my neighbors and into my uh, church ward members. And I don't like that. I, don't, I think that's totally unfair to we, the, to my friend. Tuesday, the militias told us they feel this fight is still not over and they don't plan to leave. Tensions have subsided and the crowds of self-appointed militia around rancher Cliven Bundy have largely dispersed, but the situation is far from resolved. Thanks for joining us. Federal officials are now exploring their legal options and Metro Police confirm that an investigation is open. What has not been made public is just how close things out at the Bundy Ranch came to an all-out gun battle. Some of those who were on the front line spoke exclusively to the I-team's George Knapp. This really was a close call, and it, yeah. things could have gone wrong a hundred different ways. Uh, when the BLM mobilized to go after Clive and Bundy's cattle two years ago, they did so under, so under an administrative order. This time, it was considered a criminal matter, mm -hmm. and we've learned that order went all the way to the White House for approval. When it became apparent that things were not going well in Bunkerville and hundreds of armed Bundy supporters were on the scene, Metro found itself right in the middle, a very dangerous place to be. We didn't show any fear that day. And I can tell you in the back of all of our minds, we, we thought that was going to be the last day on earth if it went bad, if it went bad. I hear Ford on the radio. Metro Sergeant Tom Jenkins is more familiar with the craziness of the Las Vegas Strip, which is where he and his squad usually work to keep the peace. Bring the property back. But when things began to turn ugly in Bunkerville earlier this month, two squads of patrol officers, along with a SWAT unit, were dispatched to the scene. And we were told, hey, we're going to go down there and we're going to, you know, get in between BLM and the protesters. And you're going, okay, that, you know, we've been there before. We, you know, we deal with protests on the strip and all of that. But as we were driving up, you know, it was like a movie set. It didn't look, it didn't look real at all at first. And it was hard to, you know, to perceive that, hey, there's people in the back of pickup trucks with rifles and shotguns and 
many weapons were out there at the time. So it was, it was hard to grasp that at the beginning. Approximately 30 Metro officers stood between a crowd of 400 heavily armed, self-described militia and the federal employees who'd gathered a few hundred head of Cliven Bundy's cattle. As the crowd swelled and tempers flared, many in the crowd tried to goad the police, hurling taunts and insults. Coward! Coward! Um, we had no respect for them and their authority out there and, and just the, the, you know, the profanity. What kind they, of stuff? I mean, I profanities. Mean, just everything. Anything you could think of, you could call a human being, animals, I mean, everything, and you're going, ow. Shut your mouth, you have anybody say to you the effect of, are you ready to die today, officer? Yes, I did. Uh, I don't know his name. I know he was wearing a Pittsburgh Steeler jersey. I'll never forget that. I need everybody calm heads, okay? Calm heads, all right? Shuttling back and forth between the Bundy forces and BLM was Assistant Sheriff Joe Lombardo, who'd been left in charge by Sheriff Doug Gillespie. You know, the bottom line is bloodshed over cattle, uh, unacceptable. Uh, Nobody wanted to go that direction. We're not here to arrest anybody. No, yes, but sir, the police were to learn we were some in the cattle, crowd did want to go in that direction. Even Lombardo was on the receiving end. It was a scary point in itself. Um, they were in my face, uh, screaming profanities and pointing weapons. Now, the Bundy son himself that I was negotiating with, Dave, he did not do that, but all the associated people around them uh, did do that. Oh, 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 Metro officers deal with large crowds all the time, but nothing like this. The crowd included former military men and ex-cops, people with various motives, their fingers poised just above the triggers of powerful weapons. With so much firepower in so many hands, any small incident could have set off a bloodbath. BLM, go home! We were outgunned, outmanned, and uh, there wouldn't have been a good result from it. I mean, there, there are a lot of scenarios that could have played out that would have a lot of dead officers, dead yes, officers. Yes, you're correct. So if you just have a backfire, somebody pops a firecracker, then it's over, we're done, and we're gonna lose that battle that day. Worst case scenario, you've played it out in your head. Yes, no doubt. It has a lot of dead cops in it. Uh, at least at least 21, because where we were standing and, and where we were at the time. Metro pointedly did not allow officers to put on helmets or protective gear for fear it might be seen as a provocation. At the urging of Cliven Bundy, the crowd moved toward the BLM compound. Rhetoric grew more heated and guns were pointed at officers. Had to happen sometime, might as well happen now, right? Some of them, there's no doubt, just from talking to me, wanted to get a chance that day to fire upon police officer or authority in period. I don't think it mattered if it was BLM or if it was us. Nevada State okay, and and there's, there's a time for you. No, there's a time, the time for us. Is now. We're doing it. As the no, crowd closed in business. on the People BLM and tensions approached you're critical mass, Joe Lombardo made the call to release the cattle and defuse the situation. Because sometimes it's hard in public safety to, to turn, turn your back and back down, you know? We're not trained to operate that way. Uh, but they did the, they took the better route, and uh, and it was it was the right way to go. Well, it's all about li lives. I mean, what's the better route to go? This uh, to be right or to be effective? If one tiny mistake had been made, we'd still be having fu funerals for slain police officers, law enforcement officials told us. Dozens of people could have been killed if shooting had broken out. When someone points a gun at a police officer here in town, we know how that situation is likely to end. Out there, it was a different matter, but it's not over. The I team has learned that those who are involved in threatening the lives of officers are not off the hook, even if it takes a year or more to resolve. Good evening. A dramatic development in the saga surrounding rancher Cliven Bundy. The FBI is on the case now. The 8 News Now I team has learned that FBI agents have started an investigation into the events surrounding a showdown that could have easily turned bloody one month ago. Chief I team reporter George Knapp is here with that exclusive story, George. Yeah, it's one thing for uh, Cliven Bundy and his supporters to square off against uh, an assortment of BLM employees. It's quite another when the FBI enters the picture, and that's exactly what has happened. The I team is confirmed that FBI agents have launched a formal investigation into alleged death threats, intimidation, and possible weapons violations that culminated with a dangerous showdown on April 12th. And the first people to be interviewed by FBI agents are Metro Police, starting with the sheriff. 
As viewers will recall, federal employees suspended their roundup of Cliven Bundy's cattle following a confrontation outside the BLM compound near Bunkerville. At the urging of Metro, Bundy's cattle were released, but BLM's new director announced the matter wasn't over and would be resolved one way or another. We now know what that means. This is probably the scariest time in my life. Last week, we heard from Metro officers who intervened to protect the lives of federal employees from the 400 or so Bundy supporters and armed militia members. Officers told us they feared for their lives that day because of the assembled firepower and because many in the crowd had pointed weapons at officers, taunted them, told them they should be ready to die. We were, we're talking about cattle, not human beings. Assistant Sheriff Joe Lombardo, who was left in charge of the Metro contingent by Sheriff Doug Gillespie told us such alleged behavior would be the subject of a criminal investigation. The federal authorities are conducting an investigation and I'm pretty confident that it's going to continue into the future. Would there be consequences for somebody who's there on videotape on, on a news camera pointing a gun at a Metro officer or pointing a gun at a federal ranger? Yes, there's going to be consequences. There Definitely, I mean, that's, that's unacceptable behavior. Uh, if we let it go, uh, it would continue into the future. The I-Team has learned that Lombardo was interviewed by FBI agents earlier this week. The first person to be questioned by the FBI team was Lombardo's boss, Sheriff Gillespie. The sheriff confirmed to us he was asked about what he saw the day of the showdown, whether guns were pointed at Metro officers. He declined to tell us what he said to the agents. FBI agents also spoke to an entire squad of Metro officers who were on the scene to act as a buffer between the crowd and the BLM. Bundy supporters have insisted in emails and calls to 8 News Now that no one in the crowd pointed weapons at BLM or Metro, but officers told us that's exactly what they saw, that many with guns set up behind women and children. Oh, it's not a rumor because when we first got out there, that's who we, when we pulled up and, 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 and made the left there to, to divide uh, the I-15 North and South is where we were set up. Um, that's all you saw. You saw the kids and you saw the women and then you see, you can see the horses off, you know, in the backdrop. And then you see the men with guns everywhere. They're laying on the ground, they're in the back of pickup trucks. And you're going, wow, this would never happen down in Las Vegas. But it was there. That's not a rumor. Uh, that was reality. And I saw that with my own eyes, no doubt. Sergeant Jenkins has been interviewed by the FBI already. A second squad is expected to be interviewed by week's end. The Bureau does not confirm or deny the existence of any investigation, but we have confirmed from multiple sources that a criminal probe is underway. It is illegal to point loaded weapons at federal agents, and we don't have to tell you what would happen if a suspect pointed a gun at a Metro officer here in the Valley. Clive and Bundy supporters have been adamant in saying to us that no weapons were aimed at the feds or at police, that the BLM Rangers were the ones pointing guns. From the sound of things, they'll be given a chance to prove those allegations because the FBI is coming their way. Police investigators are taking a long, hard look into Jared and Amanda Miller's past. They're hoping to find a motive for their attack on police. The I-Team's Nathan Baca has been looking through those same clues and shows what he's discovered about the shooter's beliefs and criminal past. Well, Metro Police announced today that after Jared Miller and his wife uh, murdered those two police officers, they announced that this is the beginning of a revolution. Today, we are learning more about how that so-called revolution drove Jared and Amanda Miller to violence. PX, hold off on that. Uh, he may be at the location. As self-described militias gathered at Clive and Bundy's Bunkerville Ranch, Jared and Amanda Miller joined them. Jared Miller posted online that he and his wife quit their jobs and sold everything to buy supplies. Television station KRNV aired an interview with Miller at Bundy Ranch. I feel sorry for any federal agents that want to come in here and try to push us around or anything like that. I, I really don't want violence toward them, but if they're going to come bring violence to us, well, if that's the language they want to speak, we'll learn it. Miller wrote that because of his past felonies, militia members kicked him and his wife out of Bundy's ranch. Miller added, how dare you ask for help and shun us dedicated patriots. Jared Miller posted political statements on social media several times each week. It is difficult, if not impossible, to put a political label on Jared Miller. He does not appear to follow the sovereign citizen or anarchist movements. 
Fellow Bundy supporter tells the I-Team Jared talked of trying to incite an Indiana white supremacist group to shoot police. Miller attended political events supporting Libertarian and American Independent Party candidates. Protesters get arrested every day in America, people. Miller every believed a coming police day. state would bring concentration camps for Americans. Metro Police says he draped a Don't Tread on Me flag on the bodies of the two officers he and his wife murdered. That is a symbol commonly used by people protesting the federal government. In 2012, Miller posted, I do not want to kill cops. I'm not advocating doing it. I'm not going to go out and find a cop and shoot them. But if they come to take me away, I would rather die than go to jail or a FEMA re-education camp where I've done nothing to hurt another human being. That is the courthouse. The police were after Jared Miller because of a 2003 probation violation from Indiana. In October 2013, Miller claimed he just discovered Indiana issued a warrant for his arrest. Records show his first crime was stealing a car shortly after graduating high school in Kennewick, Washington. He served a few months jail time for a series of marijuana arrests and one charge of battery. After his 2012 wedding, Jared and Amanda came to Las Vegas and worked as street performers. Amanda acted out as Harley Quinn from the Batman comics. Jared was the Joker. Cliven Bundy's son, Ammon, confirms Jared and Amanda Miller were at their ranch. Ammon says the state militias asked them to leave because of, quote, radical conduct and things that they were saying. Ammon added that they've contacted the sheriff's department to express their willingness to cooperate with their investigation. Interesting. Good work, Nathan. Yeah, thanks, Nathan.